Can the laws of nature be reversed? Definitely. And it's done through Hotep, or what we now call alchemy. And the tomb stands at the beginning and end of it. In part one, I explained how a tomb was the cosmic law responsible for bringing the entire universe into existence. And this sacred process of creation can be seen as a breathing out from pure spirit expanding into matter of ever greater density. This process of physical manifestation is called patah, spelled P-T-H. And the reversal of these letters spells HOTEP, H-T-P, a magical process that returns physical matter to its most refined form, the monatomic state, with monatomic gold being the most perfect example. <coughs> As a human endeavor, we now call this process alchemy, a word deriving from the Arabic alchemit, meaning ancient Egyptian and it represents a return to the state of oneness, of unity, the monatomic state of a tomb. Years ago, while watching a full moon eclipse just below the first cataract in S1, I was given a revelation about the Egyptian system of gnomes, which are energy points like chakras in the Indian teachings. In it, the Nile symbolized the spine of Egypt, with temples or teaching centers located all along it. And of these, I was told that S1 represented the base chakra, from which the life-giving waters of the Nile flowed upwards towards Giza and the Yunu, where the great temple of Atum stood, marking the position of third eye. Although the temple in Aswan was dedicated to Kanum, this first gnome is symbolically governed by Atum, and both of these netters are often depicted with a ram's head, and represent different aspects of creation. Being the first manifestation of God in the entire universe, a tomb represents the number one, which stands alone since no other netter or number has yet been created. And because of this unique position, it symbolizes the unified spirit, which has been used by all sacred teachings and religions to represent God. The number one is the number of beginnings, and therefore a pioneer. It's independent and self-sufficient with nothing to hold it back. And being the origin of all manifest things, its creative power is ready to bring the treasures held in the bowl of Nu into the physical realm. However, this solitary number or netta stands alone, and without any other to know it, it remains unknown. In a short poem by the great Sufi Sheikh Ibn Arabi, God says, I was an unknown treasure that longed to be known, so I created creation that I might be known. This beautifully sums up the reason why God created the universe and sets the tone for the role a tomb will have to play in it. The hidden or unknown treasures are all concealed in Nu or God non-manifest. And longing is a desire, the principal function of the netta Isis. So let's look at the word known. Knowledge is stored in the mind, which will perish with the body. But to really know and fully understand something with all your being, 
is called wisdom, which resides in the secret inner heart known as the Sir in Sufism. This type of knowing can either be attained through a complete digestion and transformation of knowledge through experience, or it can literally be God-given as a divine revelation. So as the only number and netter to exist, a tomb had to spontaneously create each individual thing as a divine revelation. A tomb is the monatomic state of matter. And just as Rao, God, created the universe that he might be known, the created entities serve as a mirror for him, exactly as we see in this image where a tomb recognizes himself as Senesret, while Senesret can now know himself as a tomb. As a cosmic principle, a tomb is sound. Being completely alone in the universe with no partner to procreate with, he made the first utterance of pure sound without form, and that gave birth to a series of netters and numbers which are his descendants. Known as the divine command, it's the great monosyllable mentioned in the Qur'an as kun or bi in English. In the Qur'an, Allah or Ra or God or Source, as you wish, says, whenever we desire a thing, we just say to it be and it is. It means instant manifestation. There's no space or time between the voicing of the desire and its actual physical manifestation, because Shu and Tefnut have not yet been created. This utterance doesn't need words, since a tomb was creating things that had never existed before, whose names were added to them at a much later stage. <laughs> An utterance originates in the heart and is made manifest through the vocal cords. But what makes the sound truly possible is the breath, which is none other than the divine gift of life itself. And this is why the ankh is repeatedly offered to the nose of the king, since it is the most precious gift of all. This relief was carved over the entrance to the tomb of Merampatach in the Valley of the Kings. And as you see in the central solar disk are images of Khepri and a tomb. Why? Because Khepri is the netter of constant renewal, and a tomb is associated with beginnings and expansion. And since a tomb is where a dead body is buried, it could naively be read as best wishes for your future life. And by the way, did you notice how when I say a tomb, it sounds exactly like the name a tomb? Now, as a single atom, a tomb represents the monatomic state. And at death, the body and spirit are separated, with the bodily elements returning to their original monatomic state. But the king's body is mummified and therefore will not disintegrate. The king represents the perfect man, the final product of the temple teaching. So by placing these images of a tomb and hepri on the outside of the place where his body was buried, can only refer to that part of him that did not die and had already been living in that monatomic state of oneness long before the death of his body. So the original meaning of this symbol is more like the threshold where the body and spirit make their final separation, because the body will remain inside the tomb, but the spirit is free. <laughs> primordial mound on which a tomb rose from the waters of Nu is called Ben-Ben, which is the name of the pyramidion or capstone on a pyramid or obelisk, 
And I'll be speaking about those in an upcoming video. But before I go, I want to bring your attention to a most incredible poem by Rumi called The Poem of the Atoms. And I'll add a link in the description below of two men singing this poem in the original Farsi with English subtitles, because I feel this can truly help change your understanding of a tomb as the monatomic element and what the atoms are all about. So when you enjoyed today's presentation, please click the like and subscribe buttons. It does help the channel to grow. And when you want to support it, you can do so through the Buy Me A Coffee link in the description below, where you can also add any comments or questions you have. And I look forward to seeing you soon with the Ben Ben video.